Alright, so now that I've gotten sub 2 on Vine Seed, I've realized that I'm going to move to Clock Seed and that I need to set up an instance for that. And I also realized that that's probably what a lot of other people are thinking right now. So I've decided to do a brand new uh, tutorial on how to set up Minecraft for SSG speedrunning. Alright, so the first thing you're going to need to do is open all the links I have in the description. For the portal practice map, well, the only download link available that I know of is in the SSG speedrunning Discord server. So you'll have to at least temporarily join that server and I'll leave an invite link in the Discord server. Also, the map is really bad and since the seed is so new, uh, there hasn't really been time for people to make a proper practice map yet. So uh, definitely check the pinned comment to see if I have updated about a new one. Anyways, uh, most of you probably have Minecraft already, but if you don't, uh, just go to the link, Minecraft, check out. You're going to have to sign with your Microsoft account, put in all your credit card info, and that will tell you to download Minecraft, but don't download it. Instead, we're going to use a different launcher called MultiMC. To use MultiMC, though, we need uh, to install our own version of Java. And the version we're installing is also going to be faster than the one built into the official launcher. Let's just head on over to the uh, second link and uh, filter for your operating system. For me, it's going to be Windows, and it's going to be by 64 And we're going to want JDK. And just choose any version that is 17 or above. And then do the .msi. Now you can hit save and then open your downloads folder. And once it's downloaded, you can run it. You will need admin permission for this. So if you don't have admin on your computer, definitely get that. So next, next, install. Uh, wait for it to pop up with the install request. Hit yes. And wait for it to install. I can hit finish and move on to the next step. All right, now we're going to download MultiMC. So scroll down and choose which one's right for you. I'm going to do Windows, and then hit save, and then you're going to go back over to your downloads folder, and then you can extract this folder. Let's right click and extract all, extract. And then in this new folder, take this folder and just drag and drop it onto somewhere that you'll keep it safe, like your desktop. Now you can open up MultiMC and then scroll down to MultiMC.exe and then right click and hit show more options and then hit create shortcut. And then you can just drag and drop this on your desktop or your taskbar, wherever you feel like. And then you can open that up. First thing you're going to do here is choose your, choose your language. So for me, it's American English. Hit next. And then choose the latest version of Java you have. So that's going to be 21.0.1 for me. And then go over down here to RAM and then set this to 2048. And then you can hit finish. Now, first of all, go to Profiles, Manage Accounts, Add Microsoft Account, and then click on this link here, and go back, hit Copy Code, and then paste the code you just copied into the box. Now you have to sign into your Minecraft account. All right, now you can close the tab and go back to MultiMC, where it will log you in, and there's your account. Now that you've done that, go over to Launcher, User Interface, Colors, Dark, and then you can hit Close, and now you'll be able to see. And you can hit Add Instance here, and name it something like Practice, because this is the one we're going to use for our practice map. And then we can put it in a group if we want, let's call it SSG. And then scroll down to 1.16.1. And you're going to click OK. And then you're going to hit Edit Instance, Install Fabric, and select the latest version, which has the star. Hit OK. 
Now it's time to install our mods. So we're going to go over to mod check and download that. And then we can hit save. Then go back to your downloads folder. And then open mod check. And then you can go back to multi MC. And you can go to loader mods and you can hit view folder here. And now you're going to click right here. And then just select this whole thing and copy that. Now on mod check, hit select instance paths, paste in what you copied to your clipboard, and then just hit select. And then just hit set seed, choose the OS that's right for you. Don't check this. Hit select all recommends, hit OK. Then unselect Krypton, scroll down, and select standard settings. And now hit download. And hit OK. Now you can go back over to MultiMC and you'll see all your mods are going to be automatically downloaded for you. Then you can hit OK and we're done with Modject now so we can close it. Now open the Discord server that I sent and download the world. You're going to hit continue to download. Now head on over to the worlds tab on MultiMC and just drag and drop this into that. And now you're going to go to loader mods again gonna go back over to your browser to download the mod people practice and just download the latest version hit save and then drag and drop that into your mods folder I'll uncheck standard settings now you're gonna hit launch and we have the game open you're gonna want to go to options probably turn off music and then go to FOV I like using 95, um, but choose whatever you like best. Definitely don't use something like Quake Pro though, because it's hard to be accurate like that. And also don't use something like 50, because then you can't really see. Uh, now click on the Ender Pearl. Now scroll down and hit Use Global Options. Hit Yes. And then hit Timer. Turn off Hide Timer and Options. And go to timings, hit timer start on first input. Now go to retime and turn off auto retime for SRC. And now you can hit cancel. Now go to video settings, set your render distance to 8, brightness to 500%, turn off VSync, set your FPS limit to whatever your monitor's refresh rate is unless it's under 120 when you should set it to 120. Now turn off view bobbing and then go to quality, NTD distance to 500, turn off vignette, and then set your GUI scale to whatever you prefer, but I wouldn't go lower than three, maybe do two, um, but it'll just make crafting easier if you have a higher one. Now you can hit apply and close. I, I was just editing the video and I realized that I forgot to say turn off full screen. You also have to make sure full screen is not enabled on options. So yeah, leave that disabled. Then go to controls and then make sure your sensitivity isn't anything crazy because it's hard to be precise then. Turn off auto jump obviously. And then set your sprint hotkey to whatever you like. And then make sure that you can reach all of your number hotkeys. So for me, I'm going to set 6, 7, 8, 9 to Z, X, C, and V. If you have anything like this, just set it to something that you won't use. Also, you should be able to reach your F5 hotkey and your F11 hotkey. For that, I'm just going to use F1. Now you can hit Done. And then go to Chat Settings. And then turn down Chat Text Size if you want. And then for language, some people use a custom language for crafting. Um, I think the current, like, most common language is Ukrainian because it will, like, give you faster search crafting, but that's obviously optional. I'm not going to use a custom language. For this, you're going to click it to whatever you prefer your button to quit your world without saving to be, which will be called menu.quitworld. So I prefer center, but use what you prefer. Now you can hit done, and then shift click on the golden boots and paste in the seed from the description. This is the seed we're going to be running. And then go over to people practice, and then go to end split, hit configure, go to inventory, 
Now you're gonna remove everything from your inventory and what you're gonna grab are three ender pearls, a gold pickaxe, three ladders, six endstone, and a bow and some arrows. You only really need one, but I'm just grabbing six for fun. Actually, I'll just I'll just do one. Um, and now you can hit done. And preferences, leave this off. Make sure this is front. And then turn this off. And then you can hit escape. And for this, just do whatever you prefer. And now you can just go back. Now you can close your instance. All right, now right click, hit copy instance, and then rename it to instance one or SSG or something like that. Deselect copy saves and keep playtime, and now hit edit instance. Now go to loader mods, delete people practice because it's an illegal mod and only used to practice the one shot strategy. And now check standard settings and then launch the instance, and then go back to loader mods while it's launching, and hit view configs. Now wait for the game to open. And now once it's open, you're gonna see the standard options file pop up. All right, now click on the standard options file, and then right click, and then just copy the file and paste it somewhere like on your desktop, there it is right here. And now you're gonna go into the original file and then go back over here and then right click on it, show more options and then hit copy as path. And then you're gonna go into the original file, delete everything, paste in the path and delete the quotation marks. And then hit Control S to save, and you can close this. Now you can hit Quit Game on Minecraft. Open the file setspawn.json. So as of right now, uh, Clockseed is not built into setspawn, so we're gonna have to manually add it. In the future, a new version of setspawn might be released that adds this in. So if you already see what we're about to paste in here, you can just skip this step. But for now, just go to the setspawn config I paste in the description and highlight starting with the comma, and then just click right here and hit Control V. Now you can hit Control S and close the setspawn config. Now click the golden boots. This will create a new world. And then you're going to go over to the chest in the rune portal and then open it. And also make sure your game is full screen like this. And then you're going to hit Windows Shift S to take a screenshot and then hit full screen snip. Now go into the snipping tool and hit edit in paint and then hover and then full screen the image and hover over the axe and then see in the bottom left where it says the value of your pixels. Uh, now you're going to want to open the calculator and you're just going to want to double these numbers. Now you can close paint and delete your screenshot and also close your game and instead of hitting save and quit to title you're using a mod that will just create a new world right when you hit save and quit for fast resetting so instead hit stop resets and quit and then you can hit the game this is how you're going to get out of your world all the time now you can go back to multi mc hit settings and then hit minecraft and then on window size you are going to delete this and put in the like width and height that you found. Now you're all done, but there are some optional steps that you might want to follow. So the first one is going to be if you want a crosshair cursor like I have right now, you're going to search mouse settings. 
and then you're going to go to change the mouse pointer display or speed, then go to pointers, double click on normal select, scroll down until you see the C's, and then select cross I, open, apply, and OK. And there you are, now you have a crosser cursor. Second thing that we're going to be doing is how to do multi-instancing. So the first thing to do here is to right click on instance one, hit copy instance, and then delete these and rename it to instance two, and then hit OK. And then to switch between these instances, you're basically just going to use Alt Tab. Um, if you want to set up a macro to do it better, I'll leave a link to Draconix's tutorial on how to use Jolty in the description. It is meant for the wall and for RSG instead of SSG. So the only difference you'll make is instead of clicking wall for the resetting style, you're going to click multi. This is like super, super, super optional, but if you want a second cursor displacement for this chest in the stronghold, just go to it, open it, and then just go to one of the breads, and then also like put your game in full screen again, and just do the same process as the other one. Now go to iZoom and download. Save. Go to the folder. And then in here, just copy telemacro.ahk onto your desktop somewhere. Now right click on tall macro and you're going to hit show more properties and then you're going to hit edit script and find where it says if zoom default just change uh, zoom width to whatever that resolution was and then zoom height to whatever the other resolution was. And then just hit save and close. And then whenever you play the game, just open the macro and it should work. You will need auto hotkey for this. If you don't already have it, I'll leave it a link to it in the description. Make sure to get version 1.1 though, instead of 2.0. Uh, that's pretty much it though. You're all done. Uh, thanks for watching. Let me know if I missed anything. Uh, I'll leave a pinned comment about it and yeah. Uh, See ya.